Money, money, money. Okay, I've got no money in my hands, so that wasn't the best introduction. Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I wanna talk about how I invested my first $100,000. So, uh, I made my first $100,000, it was a couple of years ago, and this was a lot of money for me back then, and it still is, don't get me wrong, $100,000, you can buy a lot of cool things, you can get, I don't know, a new Tesla, you can go on vacations, you can buy the computers, uh, you can buy some new watches, a lot of people would have bought some pretty impressive treats for themselves with $100,000. But I don't know, ever since I was young, I've been quite cheap with my money, and I've preferred to invest the money than spend it on cool, impressive, luxurious items. And the weird thing is that I actually find that, that process of investing more enjoyable than buying these items. Investing it, watching it grow, watching your your net worth grow over time. It's really, uh, it's a nice, mm, it's a nice game to play. It's much more fun than buying a Lambo or anything like that. I'll tell you that. So this is how I invested my first a hundred thousand dollars. So I just want to be clear here. This is New Zealand dollars. So that amounts to around sixty-eight thousand US dollars. Still a lot of money. Now the first thing that I plunged a lot of cash into was the stock market. I'm sure you could have guessed that. Mm. I'm a big fan of Warren Buffett. I started studying the stock market when I was around 17 years old. I'm 26 years old today. Um, so I really wanted to get into the market as young as I possibly could. It's that whole story of compound interest. The earlier you start, the more money you get at the end. So altogether, I invested around 60K in the stock market, and most of this, I put into low-cost ETFs, exchange-traded funds. And I chose ETFs because they are known to be very cheap, right? And they actually beat most managed funds. They're an easy way to invest in the stock market and still get high returns. And the ETFs that I chose was a mix between large companies in the United States, in Australia, in New Zealand, and I also bought a world ETF. So this way I own companies throughout the world which I'm paying little fees on, and it just means I'm well diversified in the stock market with an easy option of investing. But I also did buy individual companies as well. I bought a lot of shares in Facebook back in the day, back when they had that big Cambridge Analytica scandal. Uh, it was selling for a big discount back then and I made a lot of videos on it. Uh, I bought some shares in Amazon, Jeff Bezos' Amazon, or should I say former Jeff Bezos' Amazon, he's not CEO anymore, and this did pretty well in terms of returns. Um, I bought some shares in AbV, the pharmaceutical company, pays a really nice dividend. Uh, I bought some Pepsi, I bought some Johnson & Johnson for the dividend as well. And I also bought a couple of other stocks, which maybe we'll talk about another day. But altogether, it was $60,000 in the stock market. Now, that's $40,000 left. What else did I invest in? The next one that you might find somewhat interesting, I don't know, depending on who you are, uh, and that is I put $10,000 in gold. And I did this through a gold ETF, called the SPDR Gold Trust. And this is the exact trust that Ray Dalio owns gold in. So that was a big reason why I did buy the gold ETF, because of Dalio's influence on me. And the ticker symbol for that one is GLD. But the reason why I chose gold, there was some key reasons. First, it was to diversify my money out of the stock market. Second, Gold has been used as a store of value since I believe it dates all the way back to 550 BC with the king of Lydia. So it's got that test of history behind it and it's just known as a safe asset to own. So that was 10K in gold. Now the next one that I'm gonna talk about, it's a lot less safe, but there's a lot more room for growth. It's a bit of a controversial investment and that is, have a guess. Bitcoin. So I purchased around $2,000 uh, in Bitcoin when it was around $34,000 a coin, US dollars. And my plan is just to leave it. I have no plans on selling it anytime soon. 
I'm not going to be trading Bitcoin. I'm not going to be waiting for short term price movements. Just buy, hold and hope that as crypto gets more and more popular, Bitcoin stays at the top of the pile and becomes widely adopted. This is a possibility. If so, I make a lot of gains. And if not, it's money that I can afford to lose. $2,000, it's, it's not the end of the world for me. But in my opinion, if I look at uh, Bitcoin in five, 10 years from now, it's going to be a lot higher. And I've done some certain calculations around this. This is not just a guess. I've made, I've made videos on this in the past, which you can check out the reasons why if you want. The next thing that I purchased was the great Toyota Caldina. Hmm, what a car, what a car. Basically, it's a car that could get me from A to B. It's very simple. It's nothing too ex expensive. It set me back around $7,500 and it only had 60 kilometers on it. So I knew that it's going to last me for a long time. It's going to do the job that a car needs to do. Yep, it's no Tesla. Sorry, Elon Musk. <laughs> I'd rather buy the stock than buy the car. But, you know, the Toyota Caldina is the perfect car for me. <laughs> I don't really need anything, anything else, I guess. Now, some people might know this about me, uh, but in 2019, I bought a plane ticket to Thailand. And this is when I first was starting up my business. I needed a cheap place to live. And I chose Thailand because... Well, I'd had one of my best friends who lived there, and I guess, who doesn't want to live in Thailand for a year? <laughs> now, this trip altogether, it cost me around $10,000, uh, give or take. But this was for the entire year, all, all expenses included. The motel, the food, the travel, the entertainment, the co-working space, the motorbike trips. And what I was doing with this trip experience, work, holiday, is... I was incorporating what I learned from the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. One of the big premises is in the book, if that's the right word, premises, or premise in the book is to earn a strong currency online and then have your expenses be in a weak currency. This way, you live cheaply, but you still earn well. So I was earning US dollars, one of the strongest currencies in the world, through my online business, and all of my expenses were in Thai baht, a very weak currency. You know, currently, one US dollar equals 33 Thai baht. So I could stay at a nice motel, eat nice food every day, do fun things, and it hardly cost me any money because I earned in a strong currency and paid in a weak currency. Then basically what I did was just saved and invested the rest of my income that I earned and that I built with my business through the year of 2019. Now these next three things that I bought, in hindsight, they were the most important investments that I've made in my life and they were some of the most cheap. So the first thing that I bought was a camera. I've actually upgraded my camera since then, but a camera. And the whole package was around $900, okay? The second thing I bought was a little clip on microphone so that you can hear me in my videos properly. And that was around $80. And the last thing that I bought was a bigger condenser microphone for voiceovers that was around $190. So that's just over one grand altogether. And these three things, you're not gonna believe this, basically. <laughs> but they have made me over 800,000 US dollars minus tax. I still have to pay tax on this. And, and I earned this through my other investing YouTube channel, uh, which is a lot bigger than this channel. Maybe one day that will change, I don't know. So yeah, that, that is a lot of money, right? Unless you're Bill Gates, then that's nothing, but <laughs> that's a lot of money. So. What we have to realize is that sometimes it's not the stocks, it's not the gold, it's not the crypto investments that will make you rich. Sometimes investing in your own business, at least for me, is what made me the most money. So think about that. If you're investing not that much money, maybe look at investing it in yourself. Whatever your passions are, look to build up a business that way. That's where you can make some some crazy returns, returns that people people won't even believe what you made when you say it, say it to them. Which by the way, I don't, I don't talk about my returns to anyone, but 
I don't mind making this on, on camera. I don't mind saying it on camera. But the thing with these investments, this $100,000, the way I think about it is the way Warren Buffett talks about and teaches. He goes like, it goes something like this. Someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. And this is what I'm doing with these investments. I'm just planting seeds. Put some seeds in the stock market. Give them some time, let them grow, keep watering them, keep buying more and more. Uh, buy some gold, let that grow over time. Bought a bit of cryptocurrency, just forget about that investment and who knows, maybe I'll come back to it in 10 years and they'll be, that, that'll be worth a whole lot of money. That's how I think about these investments, just planting seeds, planting seeds, planting seeds, and then you sit back, you watch them grow, you water them, and then maybe you'll have a couple of big trees to sit under and you don't have to stress about money in the future. <laughs> yeah, maybe I am missing out on buying a new Lamborghini or a new Ferrari. That's what you see in most of these types of videos, right? You see some dude standing beside his Ferrari in a garage or something. But for me personally, I'd much rather have assets that go up in value over time compared to ones like a Lamborghini that depreciate over time. But hey, if I hadn't read Warren Buffett or watched Warren Buffett, I probably would have just blown my money on something stupid. So I guess I can say I owe a lot of my success to to Warren Buffett's teaching. So thank you, Warren. I know you'll never see this video, but thank you for teaching me uh, the art of investing.